Hi guys, smart box tools required. You're going to need a, basically a tape measure, a sharpie marker, half inch drill bit, a quarter to five sixteenths drill bit, a number three Phillips, and a number two Phillips, a half inch driver adapter, you might have one of these in your toolbox, half inch and nine sixteenths open end wrench pliers just in case you need them, a uh, number three manual screwdriver, large plate screwdriver is also good, and a cordless drill with a half inch chuck. It's 43 eighths uh, wafer head screws, 36 quarter inch SEM screws. These little pre installed rubber bumpers are for the end stops of the smart box going back and forth. A couple of little finishing uh, plastic snap ons, eight corner brackets, and then th this whole assembly here is the, the, the pickup truck pull down assembly. We've got eight plus nuts that you're going to be drilling into the truck box, all the hardware that's going to join these plates together. So this is what you're going to see with the truck boss six foot right out of the box. You're going to have the, the pre-assembled panels on top and then one loose roller. If you lift these up underneath you're going to see that there you have the side sections and partitions. You're going to want to take those guys out of there and put them aside for later installation. Removing the end sections and side panels, what we do is we take these guys, flip them over, be careful not to dent the, the corners. And what you'll see is that this will now turn into our middle roller. We're going to take this section. Sometimes it's not a bad idea to have a friend with you, but it's not totally necessary. We slide these together and max these up to the pre-drilled holes. As you'll see on the ends, the roller channel is set back about half an inch from the main deck. And we do that for a reason. The end caps fit over this, but we'll show you that in the next assembly. And we try to keep all the same sides together. And it's a matter of fitting one end in first, to the corner, picking these up, picking the, the braces up so that the flange slides underneath it, and then pulling it back. It slides really nice because it's an anodized surface. Now you're ready to drive your wafer screws in and build the main deck. So now we're ready to start to drill our three screws per side. When in doubt, just follow where the pre-assembled screws have been drilled. You'll see that there's three down this side, and you'll see that there's corresponding holes on the other side of the roller channel. Now, bear in mind that these are not pre-drilled, so you're going to have to give yourself a little bit more of a push to let the tech head wafer screw go into the bottom extrusion. It's always a good idea just to make sure that you're seated right up against the channel with this piece. I usually just take a little grab like this, just to be safe. And you just carry your screws along and continue to drive them into the holes. On the second panel, you're going to have to reach over, and it's the same sequence as the first one. You use these reinforcing bars, channels, to, for the alignment. They're pre-drilled, you drive a screw into them, again, pre-drilled hole, and then we just follow the same three screws through to join the other sections together. Now you're complete on the bottom deck. Now that we have the main deck assembled, we're going to move on to the two sides and the two ends. 
These are going to be the front of the box, that is at your tailgate side of the box. You'll see that they've all been loaded with hardware. Uh, but basically at the front of the box with foam caulking dams so you don't lose the hardware. So we're on our end caps. We want to know which is the top and the bottom of the panel. Well, you can look at where our label is. Hopefully we put the decal on, right? And uh, we'll install in one nut, quarter inch nut in the top, four nuts on the side for the brackets, and then six nuts on the bottom. We pull the whole assembly back. We take our end cap. We fit it on one side at a time, capture all those decks, slide it in place, and what we want to do to center it is that we center these oval holes in the center, about dead center of the corresponding extrusion grooves, and now you're ready to put in your locking screws. You push it in to make sure it's seated against the end of the, the deck, and you drive it in. You work out from the inside out to the outside. What I like to do is I get to the end, push it in place, and drive the screw home. Then you finish up your corresponding screws into the rest of the deck. We always put the reflector on the decal end. Now what we'll do with this is that we slip the bottom of this C channel of the sides under and it pops in and you flush fit the end of the side to the end cap. And now we're ready to screw these, the sides. Our sides together, you want to make sure that you have the two corners nice and snug. Load your drill with a screw. And give the sides a little squeeze so they don't come together, don't come apart. And you're ready to go. Don't worry about this thing being overlapped because it's all going to fit up when we start putting in all our quarter inch corner bracket hardware. Go down to the other end, make sure that, that that end is secure. And don't worry about this variance in here either because your corner brackets are going to take it up. So, five screws per side. Again, just follow the pre-existing screw pattern that we used when we assembled the roller deck. Now you're ready to do the other side. Okay, we're putting the second side on, again with the reflector on the same side as the decal. And just another little tip here is that, I know I said that we, we match these corner to corner flush. Sometimes these are a little bit longer than the other. And uh, one little trick is just to split the difference between that end and this end to make a, a difference. The corner caps are gonna take it up and cover it up. It's still going to make it uh, look for a good fit and finish.
Okay, the next step that we have is uh, now that we've got our corners screwed on, that we have to put the corner brackets on with our quarter inch hardware. And this, all the uh, hardware has been pre-assembled. We take out these little foam dams and you're basically ready to go. Now remember, the bottom channels have got the, the, the corner brackets require two quarter inch nuts per corner and two quarter inch nuts here. On the bottom section, remember this is upside down, you're going to need these two for our two end stops which are going to end up being screwed on here and here. But that comes a little bit later. So we're going to install the corner brackets right now. The easiest way to do that is you have, see that these are punched with a quarter inch hole. What I always like to do is I, I line them all up with the corners so that they're going to be approximately where we want to get them installed. You do that on both sides. We have to take, of course, we have to take the, our uh, foam out of here as well just to save some time. And just set this guy up in the corner. Get it approximately where you're going to put some screws in. It just makes it a little bit easier to line up. Now what I use is a little three-quarter, the little number three Phillips. And these SEM screws, the reason that they're called SEM screws is that they have a little uh, claw washer and a, an internal claw washer on there which just keeps it from vibrating loose. So what we do with that, this is just another little tip. You can just hold it like this and then it spins in with your finger and you just give it a little snug and you just keep on installing them like this and when you've got all four installed sometimes you have to fiddle around moving them over a bit you'll see in this case that we have a little bit of high low here that's just a matter of shifting this up and let the screw catch you don't have to screw it in all the way we catch the other one and now what we're going to do is that we'll just hold this up put the get the, the corners all matching take your large screwdriver and just cinch them up by hand and again you want to make sure that these are nice and flush on, on the corners and then let the, the bracket do the work and it's the best to do all the four bottom corners first because if you have any high-low in this gap sometimes this will pull out like this you can always push the, the top top of the box together so again we just repeat the process okay now we've got all our four our eight corner brackets installed on our, all four corners hand tight with our screwdriver now you just want to go around and make sure that you got all these nice and high low here. They're all fitting up nice and snug. And if they are, this is your last check. What I do is I like to just give them the last spinal tighten all the way around. Put it into your drill. Put your number three in there and just give them a nice little hit. You can are all our eight corner brackets secure and tight. We're going to put our end stops on. These are for the tailgate stop. They are going to go into the last remaining hardware on the underside. I we usually like to put them outboard, but if you put them in like this, you can set them up on and adjust them to a rib on your tailgate, wherever you see fit. We usually just install them to the other. Snug. They don't have to be that tight. Now it's time to put our our bumper stops on. There's two of these per side, and what we're going to do is that we're going to slide our quarter inch nut right down to the end and install this one permanently because it's the end stop to prevent the box from coming out. And again, we'll be, screw and down. we'll be using. The blade screwdriver to secure that bumper in place so it's not going to move it's going to be set loose because you're going to have to adjust it for where you're going to where it's going to butt up against the tailgate 
So that's the one side, you just repeat the process on the other side. Now we flip the box over and the last step of our process is to install the partition that we identified at the start of the process when we unpacked all the components of the smart box. So in this case again, we had got some preloaded nuts in here. So you just have to go through the process of taking out all our packing dams just so you can get get going on this. And same thing on the side. We've got the one nut. Now remember that you can put in several partitions in here if you'd like, but that's an, an addition of some more of additional partitions and nuts. So make sure we take them out on both sides. And we found that the easiest way to do this is you're going to set up the knob. These are the adjustment knobs. You're going to set them up with these brackets, with our divider brackets, with a lock washer, plate washer. And what I like to do to get them aligned properly is I just install them in here. Square up the long side with the side so it's nice and straight and just secure the knob down and then repeat the process on the second side. Side of the holes and swing it into place and install your stem screws. So now the last step, just to make it look nice, is you have to get split the difference between the two sides. We've got about a 3 eighths of an inch gap, so move it over to about 3 sixteenths. And then do the final tighten of the screws. Nice and secure. Once the screws are secure, you can move the divider out wherever you want. Get it square and lock it in place. One of the last steps that we have now is that we're going to put on our, our little cover strips onto the raw edge of this extrusion so you don't have to cut your hands. We usually just use a little composite mallet, rubber mallet, or even any hammer that you have. Just tap them into place and repeat the process on the other side. And then last but not least, the moment you've all been waiting for is we're going to peel this deco off and you do that carefully by just peeling it, taking the protective cover off and pulling it slowly. And voila, your truck boss is ready to go and the next step is installing it into the hold down hardware into the pickup truck box. Hi guys, uh, Mark from Marathon here again. Today we're going to do step two of installing the SmartBox hold down system into a truck bed. Laid out before us here, we have all the tools that we're gonna need for the installation. Basically it's a start of a half inch wrench, a 9 16 wrench, half inch drill bit, quarter to three to uh, 5 16 starter bit, and then we have eight 5 16 by 3 quarter inch carriage bolts, 8 inch and a quarter 5 16 bolts, lock, 8 lock washers, 4 3 8 spacers, and 8 uh, serrated flange nuts. These are called rib nuts or pull nuts and what we're going to be doing with these is installing them into the box after we've drilled our half inch holes. But we're going to, in each of our kits we're going to be providing this little kit and what it is, 
It's an internal lock washer, internal uh, tooth washer that binds, fits through a 3 8 uh, finished nut and it provides a tool for you to install into the hole uh, where this, uh, where the rib nut expands. This is what the finished underside of your truck deck of the, of the truck box is going to look like once it's properly installed. You can see that it pulls a nice little flange and you can see that there's these little uh, grip marks where the tooth is bitten in. The, re the way that we do it is once it drops in the hole you are going to put the 9 16 on to the to the uh, 3 8 nut and you then you tighten it up tighten up the 5 16 and it's, which starts the expansion of the rib nut the other parts that we haven't explained that are on this table are the base plate and the uh, the uh, bearing angles and we're going to assemble those in our next step okay guys our next step is installing the base plate hold downs and to do that we're going to need four of the 5 16 by 3 quarter carriage bolts and four of the serrated flange nuts per side. Remember there's two of them so we have the rest of our hardware. Simplest way to start is install the carriage bolts in the base plate. Put the base plate sit down. We put on our plates or Base angles, and just keep all the nuts loose, spin on quite nicely, and remember on these serrated fl flange nuts, the harder you tighten them, the harder they are to get off because they bite into the metal and they don't rattle. Now it's important, what, the way that we've designed it is that we use, we, we mount the bearing angle on this side of the angle, just makes it a little stronger than this way. So again, the carriage bolts are pretty easy to install. Spin them on loose. And repeat for the second side. Okay, now we've got our two hold down brackets assembled. And as you'll notice, they slide back and forth, up and down. And the purpose of this is to allow our truck box, or the hold down brackets, to fit into any model of truck box on the market. Okay guys, now we're gonna set up and before we start drilling holes, we're gonna have to take some measurements. So the magic numbers that we use are six inches from the edge of the box in, and you're gonna make three marks in your truck box, generally in line with the, the inside edge of the wheel well, or along this seam, you're going to take the tape measure and just make a six inch mark there. Find the center rib of your box. Should be pretty simple. When in doubt, you can always just measure in between the seams. In this case, it's 49 inches, so we're looking at 24 and a half. So we're going to take another measurement of six inches here, make a line and do the same thing on the other side along the wheel well six inches now coming back to the center what we want to do is draw a little straight line we know where our six inches is here we're going to use our template as a straight edge and we're just going to make a little mark here to establish a center line mark that we're going to be measuring off of for the next portion of the install Okay, our step in positioning the bracket and what one thing we found is uh, that seems to work to the sweet spot of the bracket is You'll notice the the this the bracket is cut with two slots We usually push this angle up so we have about one eighth of an inch showing and you just give a little snug with your finger and That gives you a little bit of adjustment backwards or forwards and it seems to work for all the the smart box installations now an important thing to to note here is that the magic number that we deal with with the smart box is 46 and 3 quarters divide that by 2 that's 23 and 3 eighths remember 23 and 3 eighths is the number that we're going to be looking for on our next step 
which is positioning the brackets on the outboard sides of the truck box. All right, so now that we're, uh, we've got our bracket set to the 1 8th, we're going to put it down on our 6 inch mark and we're going to orient it, try to keep it square with the, with the ribs of the truck. We're going to go back and uh, to our center mark and we're going to measure 23 and 3 8 of an inch. So as you can see, one of the easiest things to do that I find to do is that you just lock the tape so you don't have to keep holding on to it. We want our 23 and 3 8 to be contacting the white portion of the hold down bracket. So right now we're at about 24 and 3 quarters so that means that we want to take our plate and move it in so that we're about 23 and 3 8. So an easy way to do this, just turn your tape around, push it down with your thumb and just find out where your tape is going to contact. In this case we have to move it in a little bit. And that's going to be pretty close because we have some adjustment in, in the slide of the bracket. So I'm confident enough here that we can take our Sharpie pen and we can make a couple of marks on the rib here and here. And we're going to want to not go down through the standing seam in here because that's where the two sheet metal pieces join together. We're going to want to go about where this pre-existing hole was. And when you get over on this side, you have an option. You can either put it in the upper part of the rib, that's what we like to do, or you can go down in the lower part of the rib, in which case you're going to have to use the nylon spacers that we showed you previously. So in this case, I'm going to choose to go to the upper part of the rib, so I'm going to make my marks here, and here, and I'm going to get a center mark there. Now that we've made our marks and we've located where we're going to drill, you're going to notice that the underside of the carriage bolt is rocking on the rib. Don't worry about that because what we're going to do once we install this is we're going to be putting plate washers to stabilize the plate nice and square. And it's probably not a bad idea to just eyeball it. Make sure that your your uh, dimensions or your the marks you've made are lining up in the center of the slots. And one last thing that's always a good thing to do before you go ahead and drill this is to climb underneath your truck and have a look to see if there's any substructure, anything that you're going to drill through. Just get yourself comfortable with it. We found that anything within the 6 inch to 12 inch range, there's usually no interference with any structural members, but it's always a good idea anytime you're drilling just to check it out. Now that we've got the right hand bracket marked and ready to go, we're going to do the same thing for the left hand bracket. Okay, now we're ready to drill the holes. And as I said previously, what we recommend is using a smaller built drill bit because you're drilling a fairly large hole in here and you're going to be a lot more accurate if you use a starter pilot hole. Now I've switched to my larger bit and I'm going to be drilling the half inch holes. 
Now we're going to be installing our plus nuts using the little 3 8 assembly that we talked about earlier. Just simply drop it in the hole, put your 9 16 on the 3 8 nut, and start to tighten up the plus nut. It's going to be a little bit stiff at first. And what that's just a function of the uh, of the plus nut starting to fold up on itself. Once it gets started, it'll start pulling together, and it goes a lot easier. Sometimes it's not a bad idea to have a ratchet if you're more comfortable with that. Probably not a bad idea to pull off, to keep it for a little bit closer alignment. You can see it starts to go a lot easier. You start to feel it tighten up. Then you'll know that the fingers of the plus nut are starting to spread out completely. You don't have to over tighten it too much. Just reverse your wrench and spin it out by hand. Okay, so now we've drilled and got it our, our third plus nut installed. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out our finishing, our installation bolt, which is composed of the tooth washer, 3 8 nut, 5 16 washer, put it into the last plus nut on this side, snug it up, drop it in the hole, and repeat the process. Okay, we've just drilled all our holes, we've installed all, all eight of our plus nuts, we've got our 5 16 by inch and a quarter screws for the base plates equipped with lock washers. So the next thing, earlier we, we had had a tipping problem with this thing with the carriage bolt sitting on top of the ribs. So we know that we're pretty close in our dimension so of our 23 and 3 8 so we go back to it again. We get it in roughly in position. You get our plate, look at it again, and it, we're definitely looking like we're going to have to do some shimming here. So the easiest way to do that, you get some standard zinc plated 5 16 plate washers. And what we have to do then is that we use them to take up the difference so that our plate's pretty level and it doesn't rock. Okay, now that we've got our, our washer shims under there, we got a nice solid contact and we don't have any rocking. If we do, it's minimal. So what we're gonna do next is we take our 23 inch or eights. And remember, you know, you can make yourself a little tri block on this as well. You don't always need to use a tape measure. But in this case, we'll just stick with the tape. And you can see that we're pretty close, 23 and 3 eights. I'm pretty satisfied that's going to work. So now we know that we could just square up our plate. It's looking good along the ribs. Time to lock it down. 
Okay, so this is basically our snug down shimmed uh, base plate. Now, in the event that you are going to be drilling into the valleys of the floor, as we you know we provide these in the kit too, you can slip them under there and you can make up any of the difference with a, a 5 16 plate washer as well. So this side is done. Now we're going to repeat what we just did to the other side. All right, now that we've got our two base plates down, snug and secure, what we want to do is we want to lock one side. And so what we're going to do is that we're going to do our measure, 23 and 3 eighths, lock that, that one side in place. And the next step that we're going to do after that, after we've done that, is we're going to pull off this bracket so we can install the box. So we've left this side loose and what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the base plate hardware that holds it down, keep the nuts over here, ease installation of the smart box which is next. Okay we've rolled the smart box into place and as you can see with our up against our fixed bracket the stop bumper is up against the bracket. We are still going to have to make, uh, adjust this for height and we're going to have to assemble our removed hardware over on the right hand side. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be picking up this hardware, dropping it down into place. You can lift, it, lift up the bracket, it'll slide to ease installation of the flange nuts. Spin them down. So now that we've installed the, uh, the bracket into place, you'll notice that our white bearing is right up against, tight against this side. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to secure it in place with the base plate nuts. And then we're going to install the tailgate and do the adjustment of our height angles. When we have our, our bracket, our angle bracket locked in, Part of the process is to move these rubber bumpers far, as far forward as we can because if they were in this position you wouldn't be able to close the tailgate and that's one of the last settings we're going to use. Uh, once we install the tailgate what we're going to do is we're going to pull the box forward, close the tailgate, it's going to stop, we're going to adjust these bumpers, lock them into place, then what we're going to do is we're going to adjust all the height adjustments for the for the two one. Okay, we've installed the tailgate. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to pull the truck box, the, the smart box, in and out to adjust the height of the hold down angles. Now here's something to keep in mind though. When you do the adjustments, it's important to keep the, the smart box square. Just look down and line it up so it's coming in and out of the box nice and straight. Then take a look down at your wheel wells and you'll notice that back bumper. On some models, particularly on some Toyotas, you may have to trim that bumper. You can take a quarter inch off each side so that it doesn't rub or interfere with the wheel well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pull the, the smart box out and you're going to watch this vertical angle slide up and down as the box climbs over the tailgate. So what you're looking for there is about the highest point of where the angle is. It's always a good idea just to check to make sure you're coming out square by eyeballing it for squareness on the tailgate. And then what you do is you snug up the, the bolts to secure the height adjustment on both sides. Okay, so the last thing that we have to do 
again is to uh, square up the bumpers both for the tailgate stop and for the hold down stop. It's pretty simple. You want it, what you want to do is you want to make sure that this plastic bumper is going to be on a rib so it's not going to be sinking into any depressions of the tailgate. So you just slide them into place. Give them a snug. This is a, I usually use a stubby screwdriver because it's good to do the sides with as well. And you just give them a little snug. And then last but not least, you want to pull the smart box open and very slowly close the tailgate. Make sure that you're on a level ground when you're doing this. And then open the tailgate and push the rubber stops in place about where it stopped. That will provide the tailgate from slamming back and forth, or the smart box from slamming back and forth, and keep it nice and secure. Once you've got the rubbers in place, just use your stubby and tighten up the screws. Congratulations, you've just installed a smart box. We recommend that after about a month of driving around, you make sure that all the hardware is tightened up and uh, happy trails.